right, good morning. Good morning. Good to have you guys with us today. Uh, not sure what's coming today, if we get a little rain or not. I think some people want it, some people don't, and, and uh, whatever. I'm not, I'm not going to put too much invested in trying to wish for it or wish it away, because I know how that goes. Uh, a couple things for this morning. Uh, mowing group one this week. Uh, the cemetery will be an easy mow. It looks like the grubs are taking good care of most of that, so uh, have fun with that dust. Um, uh, card, uh, we have another card available this morning for that we'll be sending to, to Deb and Craig Benson. Um, and uh, you can sign that uh, downstairs after the service. Uh, there should be two floating around down there. One is mostly filled up now, and the other one will be available. And then uh, Shelby has put together a care package for them as well with her um, experience from, from working with cancer patients and things of that nature. And so she graciously um, put that together and, and donated uh, the funds for that as well, so we're very thankful for for her taking care of that for us, and uh, it's, it's, be, we'll be sending that off soon. Uh, Donna called me this morning, and uh, they have, Bill is at uh, they're at Avira in Sioux Falls this morning. Uh, they thought maybe his heart, but it turns out uh, they that Donna said they think it may be a gallbladder attack. Uh, he's currently um, uh, getting a blood transfusion for a low platelet count, so we'll be keeping him in prayer this morning, and it, it sounds like it is in his heart, so, so that was a positive thing. But uh, So they're, they're uh, worshiping in the hospital this morning, which is not usually where people want to spend their, their Sunday mornings. So we'll be praying for him uh, this morning. Uh, this Thursday is the National Day of Prayer, and so uh, it's a great day uh, to use as an excuse if you don't already have a Bible that you take with you to school or work or uh, something like that it's a great excuse to, to have one because there's a, more of a purpose if somebody asks you why do you have that you could you can lean on the fact that it's the national day of prayer but uh, really encourage you to always have the word with you and to, <clears throat> to be in the word um, I would say this year uh, a good a good book that I've been trying to focus more on in the in the Bible and reading regularly again over and over is the book of Romans because it seems to apply very directly to the times that we're in and so if you're looking or thinking of something to maybe focus on on Thursday um, at work at school at play whatever um, I would recommend reading through the book of Romans just to kind of have a better understanding of what we're facing in our culture in our nation um, in our homes stuff like that and then uh, how to respond to that as well so any other announcements or things we should be aware of prayer requests or anything all right. With that, I invite you to rise as you're able as we open in our call to worship. Our call to worship this morning comes from Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipes. Praise him with sounding cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We continue in prayer. Father, we praise your holy name as we come together. This morning as we come and gather as a, as a community, as a body of believers, as a family in Christ, we praise your mighty name this morning through the opening of your word and the singing of, of songs and hymns to you and in, in opening our hearts and minds to you in prayer this morning as well. We ask, and, uh, ask you to join us in this endeavor, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit bring us peace and joy and comfort in our sinfulness. And may we have a reassurance of all that you've done for us and that you lift us up this morning, that we might praise you with mighty shouts from our hearts and our minds and our mouths. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. Our service continues with our opening song, One Day. <clears throat>
prizes One day when sin was as black as could be Jesus came forth to the born of a virgin Dwelt among men, my example is he Living he loved me, dying he saved me Buried he carried my sins far He justified, freely forgiven. One day He's coming, oh glorious day. One day they led Him up Calvary's mountain. One day they nailed Him. Die on the tree, suffering anguish, despised and rejected, bearing our sins, my Redeemer is He. Living He loved me, dying He saved.
rise as you're able. We continue the day with our confession of sins on page 49 in your hymnal number 8. We confess together before the Lord. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are loving and gracious to forgive our sins that we bring before you today. We have sinned against you in our thoughts, words, and our daily actions. In business and in our daily life, we have fallen short of your glory and have not been the kind of people you want us to be. Forgive us and cleanse us from all our sin. Thank you that Jesus has paid the price for our forgiveness, and we now lay our lives before you. Bring us to the place that we please you, both in body and soul. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> oh God, the Father in heaven, have mercy upon us. Oh God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy upon us. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us. The promise of Scripture is that whoever confesses his sins to the Lord will receive forgiveness through the faithfulness and righteousness of Christ Jesus. God, <clears throat> God grant that this may be the experience of us all. On the other hand, I declare to the impenitent and unbelieving that so long as they continue in their impenitence, God has not forgiven their sins and will assuredly visit their iniquities upon them if they do not turn from their evil ways and come to true repentance and faith in Christ before the day of grace ends. This is our declaration of grace to all who submit to God, a, a great promise that God never lets us down in and is always faithful in, but also the contrast that for those who do not submit, there, there is no hope apart from Jesus Christ. And we pray that those we know in our lives will come to the proper realization that God is Lord and King of Kings, so that they too may be saved. Amen. Congregation, you may be seated. <clears throat> Continue with our readings this morning. Our first reading comes from the book of Acts. Luke has recorded for us the history of the early church, and we read from that from chapter 8. Verses 26 through 40. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Rise and go toward the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. And he rose and went. And there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning, seated in his chariot. And he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the, and the spirit said to Philip, go over and join this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, do you understand what you are reading? And he said, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he opens not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. And the eunuch said to Philip, About whom, I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with this scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. And as they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? 
And he commanded the chariot to stop, and they both went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he passed through, he preached the gospel to all towns until he came to Caesarea. Here ends our lesson from Acts. Our epistle or letter lesson is from 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through 11, beginning in verse 4, or chapter 4, verse 1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world, therefore they speak from the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. I invite you to please rise for our gospel lesson. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. Jesus is speaking here. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. Here ends our gospel lesson. Right song. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm like, it's usually not that long before I have to say the creed. So then I'm like, are we at the right part? <laughs> and, and you know what? I forgive you because usually it's me that's like skipping the creed or something. But so uh, we, all, we all have fun and make mistakes sometimes. Thankfully, they don't matter in the long run. Um, so we uh, confess our faith on communion Sundays with the words of the Nicene Creed. And so we confess together as one body. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, 
who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Invite the ushers to come forward for our offering. <clears throat> graciously give these gifts to you, Lord, and ask that you multiply them and make a great produce of fruit from them in the world, that your name might be glorified. Lord, we come before you with uh, many things in our hearts and minds this morning, and we think of this time of year, uh, busy with uh, planting, uh, getting things in order for to produce a crop throughout the summer and throughout the year, Lord, and we ask for uh, safety and protection amongst all those who, who work in and around uh, farms and and everything to do with the raising of, of life, those, those in uh, animal life as well as plant life, Lord. And we ask your blessing upon the preparation of the ground and your blessing upon the seeds which will be planted and they may, that they may produce a bounteous crop that will provide for many sustenance. Lord, we ask for your protection and, 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 health and guidance in our health in the world around us, Lord. We, uh, we think of allergy season, we think of other uh, health ailments as well, Lord, and the decline as we get older. We ask for you to come to us and meet us wherever our need is and our, whatever physical need we're struggling with. And we ask that you be with those to provide comfort for those who have pain and, 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 and provide the endurance needed to bear up under that, Lord, and help 
help our, our physical weaknesses to not hold us back from doing the work that you are calling us to do, Lord. Um, bless us in our ability to remain focused on you and your word, that it might give us the hope that we need to make it through the struggles and circumstances of each day. And Lord, we ask for comfort and peace and, and uh, just the knowledge that many are, are coming alongside of them in prayer as well as your presence in their life, Lord, for, for Craig and Deb and, and the struggle through Deb's cancer currently, Lord. Ask that you bless them in this time. Uh, help them to find the, the hidden joys and, and the hidden peace in each day that can be found in you, Lord. Uh, we ask that you bless Pastor Benson and his ministry to the church where he's at currently as well and help him to also receive care from his congregation in this time in a, in a loving manner. And Lord, uh, those in our own community who are suffering and in our own body here who, who have overcome or come through cancer and, and may also always have that threat that it could come back, Lord, we pray for your hand to hold back uh, any, any further multiplication of cancer cells. We pray for your, your strength and, and guidance to the bodies that you've designed for us to prevent disease from overcoming our, the health in our bodies. Lord, help our bodies to be strong and healthy. And therefore, also, Lord, we pray for our minds and our, our hearts as well, that they might be strong and, and praising you in glory. And we pray for Bill this morning, Lord. We pray for the doctors who are caring for him, that they might quickly and, and efficiently find whatever it is that is the problem in Bill's body at this time, Lord. Pray that the transfusion will help him to feel better and, and help to fix the the platelet count, Lord, and be with Donna as well as she ministers and cares for Bill this morning and uh, help them to find a way to, to worship together this morning, even in the, in the circumstances of being in the hospital, and, and um, help their family to uh, uh, have peace that Bill is being taken care of by, by you and by the doctors and nurses at the hospital. And Lord, we... we uh, pray for, for those whom you've put in the world over us. We pray for the pastors and the churches in the nation. We pray for the fathers in our homes, but we pray also for the leaders in the communities that have been elevated up to roles of leadership, Lord, and, and as we lift people up to those roles and mayors and governors and presidents and, and rulers in the world, Lord, as you've placed people in certain positions, Lord, we ask that you that you be their guiding source of direction and, and wisdom, that they serve with the heart of Jesus, of looking to lower themselves to those who they serve and not lord it over them. And for any leaders in the world who operate as sovereigns and as kings instead of as servants, we pray for your swift justice and mighty retribution to put them in their place, that they might acknowledge that you are the King of Kings, Lord, and turn and lean on you alone for their wisdom and understanding. Destroy selfishness in their hearts, and help them to have a heart of Jesus. We, we cannot put that in there. Only you can change their hearts and their minds to be loving instead of unloving, to be selfless instead of selfish, Lord. And so we pray for that, and we pray for that in our own hearts as well, that we might be more like Jesus as we lead in our communities as well. And Lord, bless us in that, the more we're able to do that, Lord. And may your, your protection continue to abound. And may your, your grace always be flowing upon us, especially this Sunday where we celebrate Holy Communion together, celebrating with one another that we are connected to each other and to you, and that as we produce fruit, we glorify you, and we glorify you because of what you've put inside of us, our passions, our abilities, our desires, and the, ultimately the love that you've placed in our hearts. Help us not to take these things for granted, but to embrace them and to celebrate them. And Lord, there are many things personally with each person on their own hearts. We open them up to you in this moment of silence that we might personally connect with you. Lord, thank you for the sound of children in the church. It's such a delight and just a joy to know that we have multiple generations here. We have many people caring for each other and providing joy up and down the, the generational lines. And so we thank you for that blessing, Lord, and we ask that you protect our children in ways beyond we, what we can do, Lord. Equip us to provide safe homes for them and a safe community for them to grow up in, that they might have a strong foundation of faith from which they can go into the world equipped 
to handle themselves in the spiritual warfare that is all around us. All this we lift up in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Our next hymn is, O God, Our Help in Ages Past. you to pray with me as we begin. Father, guide and direct us through your word this morning as we open up John chapter 15. Lord, may the Holy Spirit reveal to us the truth that you have for us in this scripture and specifically how, how it affects and changes and, and works in the hearts of each and every one of us in, in a unique way, perhaps. We lift this up in Jesus' name. Amen. It's like a chorus right now. <laughs> All right. There's nothing wrong with that. You don't have to go away, honey. <laughs> no, she's trying to get him to sleep, so good luck with that, my, my, my son. Uh, our title this morning, um, oh, lovely. I put the wrong sermon notes in my Bible. That's going to be interesting. All right. I'm not going to run to the office and get it, so I'm just going to preach from the text here. This will be interesting. We'll see what God does. Hopefully. <laughs> uh, what was my title? The Fruit Matters. That's what it was, yes. The Fruit Matters. I really should get my notes, but we're going to do it. All right, we'll either crash and burn or whatever. So uh, we're opening up the, the, a classic passage of Scripture that many of you have probably heard before and, and that you probably will recall. And Jesus uh, refers to himself as the vine, and, and uh, the, the common picture and image would be of a uh, like grape vines, essentially, the wine and grapes being a fundamental uh, aspect of the culture in the, in the Middle East there, and, and the fruit of the vine that way. And it's one that they, anyone, well, even in our culture here, we know that imagery, and we know what that means. And as farmers, uh, many connections to farming here, the, the, uh, the analogies of, of uh, a vine and and fruit and, and all of that are not wasted on us. We, we know it may be deeper than most, especially those who maybe live in cities and haven't actually experienced where their food comes from. And so we'll, we'll walk through the text here, and, and, and uh, the, the very first from the get-go, the, the structure I have this morning is we're, we're beginning with the picture of God. You know, Jesus is using an analogy or a comparison here of of comparing himself to the vine, and uh, it's so that we might better understand what he's talking about. He's not literally a vine, obviously. He's speaking figuratively of the relationships here between himself and the Father, and uh, uh, what the relationship is with us as believers, and what the relationship is and in, in the meaning behind what happens to those who aren't believers anymore. And so we're going to explore all of that. And our very first point this morning comes from the first verse. I am the true vine. Jesus Christ is the true vine. And my Father, God the Father, is the vine dresser. Uh, 
So God, Jesus, is, is the vine, right? That's, that's what we're speaking here that we're connected with. And the Father is the vine dresser. The vine dresser is the one who is caring for the vines. They've planted the vines, and over the years, the vines grow. They're, they're wrapping the vines along the trellis or whatever they're using to support the vines. They're guiding the branches to where they go for optimal growth and fruit production. And sometimes they're also the ones, they're, they're pruning as necessary, which we'll speak of further later. And then they're the ones that, that are responsible for the vine. If the vine does well, there's obviously the aspect of, of what happens because of whether the rains come or the ground is good and stuff like that. But ultimately, the, the vine dresser is the one caring for the vine. And he gets the glory if the vine does well. And if the vine does poorly, he bears the responsibility in a lot of ways. And it's not solely that way. But the God the Father, he's the one directing everything that's going on. From the creation, he was there speaking, and creation came in. The plan for Jesus to be our salvation. Jesus is the boots on the ground, and the God the Father is the one behind the scenes, making everything take place and putting everything in order that things might go according to his plan. Jesus is the vine. God is the vine dresser. We could think of the Spirit is not explicitly here, and so this is the extra-biblical warning, right? Like a, the Holy Spirit is always present as well, and, and you can think of that almost as the, the power within the vine, the, the force that, you know, the sap or whatever that way, but that is extra-biblical, so don't go around saying the Holy Spirit is sap or anything like that. So it, it's not in the text, but the Holy Spirit as well. We think of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is bound up in this analogy also. And the power comes from God in that, in that spirit. Uh, every branch in me, in Jesus, that does not bear fruit, the vine dresser, the Father, takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes it, that more might be born. And I'm going to read a little further before I jump back and, and focus on what that significance of that is for us. But already you are clean, because of the word that I have spoken to you, because of the words Jesus has spoken to us, we are already clean. Every believer in Jesus Christ throughout all of history is clean because of what Jesus has spoken to him. Not by anything they did or that they tried to do or tried to be better or, or tried to be worse perhaps even, but Jesus speaks to us and says, you are clean because I have declared you clean. And if he has a relationship with you, he can do that. He can make his children clean just by speaking that truth to them because he reads their hearts and minds and he knows, oh, yes, you are listening to me. You are submitting to me. And, yep, you don't do anything perfect, but I declare you clean. I declare you a part of the vine, a branch connected to the vine. And so our first point was, you know, the, the relationship of God and Jesus. Like, God is the vine, the source but now us is the second point in that we are the branches. We come off that vine. And apart from the vine, we have no power. We have no significance. We have the inability to provide anything that could bear fruit on its own. We're a dry stick on the ground. And I don't know about you, but other than some of the women perhaps or maybe some of the guys who like to decorate with dry dead sticks, and there's not too many of those even that like the dry sticks, but... They're, they're pretty useless. You know, they're, the only thing they're good for is kindling the fire. They're dry, they're dead, there's no life in them. They can't bear any new leaves, they can't bear any fruit. And that's significant. Because the fruit is what matters to God. And so if we abide in Jesus, if we live in Jesus, that's all the fancy word abide means, if we dwell in him in spirit and mind, then he lives in us and we live in him. It's, there's an interconnectedness there. As the branch by itself cannot bear fruit unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. And so like as Christians, if we start to neglect our Bibles, we start to neglect our connection with God, well, what's going to happen is that the branch is going to diminish in its ability to function. You're going to diminish in the, the ability to produce fruit. But for those branches that are firmly connected, and, and Jesus uses another branch at another time to, to highlight to the Jews that, you know, the Jews were the ones that knew God, and they were the original branches 
in his analogy, and the Gentiles are any ones who were not in that heritage, that didn't know God by birth, and they're grafted in, and they become equally part of the vine, and those all together are the vine and branches, and the vines and branches that are, the branches that are connected to that main vine of Jesus, they continue to grow. And if you've ever looked at a branch, they don't just grow one line and then off that fruit. They, they tend to always add new branches and new, new paths. New, in a sense, you could think of if it was like a building, right? A building we just build straight up and all the energy goes into building in one direction and that bears that fruit. If the branch could just be one branch and all the fruit just came off that one branch, there wouldn't be any wasted energy in the extra branches or extra little fruit that may or may not grow on the smaller branches. And that's significant because you have to prune back a tree, right? You need to, you need to control the growth of the tree if you want to make the fruit bigger. So if you have a tree with a hundred branches, like an apple tree with a hundred branches, the fruit coming off of each of those branches might be nice on its own. But if you take that tree and you prune back to maybe 50 branches or even less, then all of the energy coming up out of the roots, all of the sap and, and then the, the life-sustaining parts of the, that produce the fruit and the leaves will be directed into fewer channels of, of fruit and growth, right? And we can get bigger fruit to some extent. There are limits, obviously, but if we prune away the things, the branches that are not healthy and we prune away the branches that are a distraction from the fruit we want to focus on, it cleans up the vine. It allows all of the good, goodness and the energy of that vine to be go into the production of the, of the good branches, of the branches that are going to produce and be able to support the weight of the best fruit. And so the vine dresser, the father, does that with us. And so in our lives, you can think of your lives, right? If you were to make a list of all the activities that you do, of all the different things that take energy out of your life, We've each been given 24 hours of resources, 24 hours each day. No matter how rich or poor we are or how, many, how, many, how big our family is or how big the, the, the re, re, uh, responsibilities we have are, we all are given the same resource of 24 hours in a day. And that can only be directed into one branch, our life. And if our life has a thousand different little branches we're trying to spend our energy on, a thousand different relationships or a, a thousand different tasks or chores, we're not going to have enough energy to do any of them, one, exceptionally well and produce really big and good fruit. And a lot of those are probably activities or re relationships that maybe aren't healthy for our, us as a plant. And they take life and resources out of our lives from the things that could make a bigger difference. And so God prunes us and he makes it uncomfortable when we're doing something sinful and we're, we're wasting energy or resources or money or time, whatever it is, on something that isn't good fruit bearing. Perhaps a relationship that we, we pour into and then that relationship is toxic or it ends up destroying the whole plant. We see that in many people's lives. Or perhaps it's a, a, a habit that we pour energy into that would be best directed to something else. I can't tell you what that is for your life, but God can, the vine dresser can. And when you need that direction in your life of where you should be spending your time, where you should be spending your money, where your investments should go if you're at an age where you're thinking about your retirement investments, it's that same thing on a spiritual level. It's all economics. There's cost and benefit. You have a certain amount of resources in your life that God has given you, and that's unique to you. And what you do with them, you're held accountable for that between you and God. And he wants you to bear fruit. He, the fruit that you will bear is what he cares about. Because if you bear much fruit, it gives glory to him as well as to you. And if you bear much fruit, the message continues on of God. Because the fruit then produces more fruit later. It produces new plants you can plant and, and attach and grow off of as well. The vine, the vine goes all the way back to Adam and Eve and that original relationship. And we are here today because of this vine that has traveled through all of history. But for those in verse 6, if anyone does not abide in Jesus Christ, he is thrown away like a branch and he withers. Apart from Christ, your life will wither. 
You can see that in the world around us. I've, I've said before, the majority of the world around us, they're not connected to Christ. They're not connected to God. And so when we see the destructive and empty lives, we see the, 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 the violence and all the other results of just people who are broken because they, they, they don't have any life source coming into them. They don't have any joy or peace being fed into their lives from one that can provide that. And sometimes God uses the people around us to help give us that encouragement that we need as well, and that's them bearing fruit so that it might bolster the other branches around us. That's why we come together on Sundays to be encouraged and to be renewed so that when we go out into the world in the week that we can help other branches that need that support and encouragement that Jesus can use us as his fruit bearers. And that we can be an example and a witness to the world, whether we directly interact with them or not, by how good our branch is working to support the fruit. And that the fruit might be good for eating and wholesome to the body, that it might restore. In contrast, many in the world, those not connected to God, as they, as they dry down and wither up, the only thing they are fit for is to get the last bit of energy out of them by burning. And it will just be used up and... God still gets the glory because what would have taken glory from his plant has been removed. Verse 7, if you abide in Jesus Christ and his words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is a, a, a thought that we often turn to when we think of praying to God. You know, we, we do not have because we do not ask. But if we are connected to the vine, our will is tied in to the, the will of the plant. And we will, we will produce in our thoughts and in our desires the same desires and thoughts of God. The apple tree will produce apples. You don't go to the apple tree looking for lemons. You don't go to the apple tree looking to pick a watermelon. And nor do you come to God looking to get anything but good fruit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control, faithfulness. These are the fruits that God offers to us. These are fruits that give us good, healthy lives. Good, healthy relationships with one another and with our Father in heaven. Our final verse. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. We focus on, on Jesus and our churches, but we need to remember that the Father is the vine dresser. The Father is the one that's desiring for us to be made in the image of the vine. He's desiring for us to produce much fruit. He's walking alongside of our lives. He's looking on us, he's looking upon us, and he's analyzing us with his pruning shears. And he sent Jesus and the testimony of the vine and what the vine should look like and how the vine should function and the life that is good of the vine. He, uses, he gives that to us as the example to follow so that we as branches of the vine of Jesus Christ might prove or be tested and shown valid as his disciples, as his students. The Father is not a wicked vine dresser. He's not looking out. The world thinks that the Father wants to destroy them and punish them all the time. But the reality is the Father wants the vine to succeed and to produce much great fruit. The Father does not vine dress the, the vines in order that they might be tortured or punished. He does it in order that they might be fulfilled in their purpose of producing fruit. If the, if the apple tree out here that we've gone through all the effort to try to save, right, if it wasn't producing any fruit last year, if it looked like it had died in the process of being knocked over, well, we would have just gave up on it. We would have just gotten rid of it because it's possible that might happen this summer anyways with the road project. And so it is with God's people. And the people in the world, they've been giving a great resource, their life, They've been planted in the world God created. And yeah, the world is full of, of sorrows and sin because of our own selves, not because of God. But his desire is for every single seed that he has ever planted in history to bear fruit for him. And his desire that everyone 
can be glorified and fulfilled in their purpose. The vine dresser cares about us so much that he sacrificed the vine. He sacrificed Jesus to live as one of us. There's that connectedness like that. Like the vine imagery is we are of the same nature of Christ in Jesus Christ. He makes us like him, and that's what his disciples are. We're not on the same level of God because we are still impure in our sinfulness in the world, but God declares us clean. He declares us branches. He declares us good branches, worthy and able to produce fruit. And in his vine dressing, he is testing that. He is proving them to be good. He examines us daily. Whether you talk to him or not, he's always got his eye on you. He's examining you, and he's looking for fruit. And he wants to guide and direct you into greater fruitedness, greater fruitful aspects of your life. Because that gives him glory. And we see that even in the creation. All of creation shouts the glory of God and the design and the ability and power that is found in nature. It speaks of a powerful creator. And that creator loves us and desires for us to bring glory to him just by living a fulfilled, fruitful life for him. He's already saved us and made us like him. Now he wants us to live as him and to bear fruit. And so he equips us to do that through his word, especially the New Testament where he's speaking directly to us in the life of Jesus Christ, in the life and words of Jesus Christ. And the only thing that prevents us from bearing fruit is our own willfulness to try to do our own branching on our own and to not give in to the vine dresser's clippers. But the glory that's available for us and the Father is great when we just submit our hearts and minds to him. And the, the blessings of that and the, the peace of heart of that, of the joy of that, the goodness of life, regardless of the circumstances, rain or shine, storm or calm, our attitudes will reflect that blessedness when we walk out in the community. And people will see that there's something different about us because we'll bear the image of Christ. We'll have fruit in abundance that we're able to feed ourselves with as well as to provide to others that we might help people around us who are starving to be well fed. And all because our Father loved us. All because Jesus cared enough about us. And he comes to us today in Holy Communion, the fruit of the vine, to remind us that you are his people. We are his body. We are his branches. And apart from him, we are dead, but connected to him and one another, we are alive. And we are joyful, and we are dancing a joyful jig, singing a beautiful song. Take that to heart and be joyful today. If you've been struggling, then let this be a day of renewal for you and dig into the word and, and hear the voice of Jesus that you might be full of life and hope. Pray with me, please. Father, we thank you mightily for your fruit. I thank you for the fact I forgot my notes because it just allows you to speak directly from your word more clearly. And my notes were probably not worthy of your, of your glory anyways, Lord. But your word and your example to us and your work in our lives, wherever even maybe we'd be struggling that you want to prune, your work is always good and holy. And Lord, help us to bear up under the pruning, to not take it personally, but to see it as you working deliberately in our lives because you love us and you want us to be better than we are. You want us to be better than we think we are because you have made us good. You have declared us clean and worthy to be planted in your ground. Thank you for that, Lord. Minister to us today through holy communion and fellowship with one another. In Jesus' name, amen. We continue with our song, Through the Love of God Our Father. <clears throat>
invite you to please rise as you're able as we continue with our communion service. Dear friends in Christ, in order that you may receive this holy sacrament in a worthy manner, you should carefully consider what you must now believe and do. From the words of Christ, this is my body which is given for you. This is my blood which is shed for you for the remission of sins. You should believe that Jesus Christ is present with his body and blood, as the words declare. From Christ's words for the remission of sins, you should also believe that Jesus gives to you his body and blood to strengthen your assurance that your sins are forgiven. And finally, you should do as Christ commands you when he says, Take, eat, drink of it, all of you. This do in remembrance of me. If you believe these words of Christ and do as he has commanded, then you have properly examined yourselves and may eat Christ's body and drink his blood in a worthy manner. You should also unite in giving thanks to Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for so great a gift, and should love one another with a pure heart, and thus, with the whole Christian church, have comfort and joy in Christ our Lord. To this end, may the God, the Father, give you his grace through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We continue in praying as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when she was betrayed, took bread and after blessing and giving thanks for it he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you this do as often as you eat it in remembrance of me in the same manner after he had supped he took the cup and after giving thanks for it and blessing it he gave it to his disciples saying take and drink this cup is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me Everything is now ready and prepared. Congregation may be seated and come forward at the direction of the ushers.
we continue in prayer, invite you to rise as you're able. Let us give thanks and praise. We thank you, almighty and everlasting God, for having refreshed us with these, your gracious gifts. We ask for your infinite mercy, strengthen our Christian faith, support us in the trials of life, and make us fervent in our love for you and to our fellow men. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Receive now the benediction of the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his faith to shine upon you and, and lift up his countenance upon you and give you his almighty and everlasting peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Heavenly host, praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. May you go forth and be fruitful this week, and may your fruit shine the glory of Jesus Christ.